One, two, one, two, y'all. Live on the Joint TV show on the number one set right now. Number one new for real hip hop and R&B. Y'all hearing it here, okay? I'm right here with my man, Boo Straight Convict, baby. What's up? What's going on, man? How you doing? Doing good. So, um, first of all, it's been a lot of rumors, you know, people have been talking and all that, you know, so man, he, the man is here to confirm, first of all, who's Boo and um, what is um, your occupation behind your brother, Akon, that's everybody's known worldwide right now, and um, who's Boo? Just let us know, I mean. Alright, well, yeah, I'm Boo, I'm the co-CEO of Convict Music, I'm the vice president of Def Jam Music Group. Um, you know, so I've been, you know, behind the scenes in my brother's career for a long time. You know, he's the artist, and I'm more so the businessman behind the music. So that's basically what it is, you know. And I'm, 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 I'm the vocal point, and I, you know, we both can't be rappers. And we both can't sing. We both can't rap. So it has to be a balance. So I'm the other balance of convict music. You know what I mean? Okay, so um, I know you're tired of answering this question, though. But what is, li what is this like being? Akon's brother, his side man, his partner, maybe his business person. I mean, how is it like? What, what, what? Can you touch on that a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, it has his goods and it has his bads. You know, the good thing is that you know, with being his brother, you know, you benefit off of a lot of things. You know, what I mean, you meet people. You know, but the, you know, the downside is, whatever you do, people always look at it like, well, ah, he's just Akon brother. He's not really that good at what he do. You know, he's lucky, and the only reason why he's there is because he's Akon brother. So, you know, it has his, it has his goods and it has his bads. But, you know, for the most part, that's my best friend. That's my brother. So, you know, I take the good with the bad. You know what I mean? So, um, being a young single, you know, grew up, growing up in the States and all that, you know, say, um, to see your position today, we can definitely say that you made your way. You know, you made your way. So, can you just let us know? Actually, um, how long you've been the vice president of Def Jam? That's what you said, right? The vice president of Def Jam. And how did that happen? Um, I've been the vice president of Def Jam for a year and a half. And um, you know, they just you know, L.A. Reid is the chairman of Def Jam. You know, he he had the face records. You know, he had groups like T.O.C., Outkast, Usher. You know, and he's seen what I've done with Akon. He's seen that you know I was the one behind all of Akon's albums, and he's seen that he's, he he know that he he knew that I discovered T Pain, so you know he um he asked me to have a meeting with him, so I sat down with him, and he basically was like you know he wants me to come work for him, and um at the time, even now like I told him I said I don't want to work for nobody, you know I got my own company which is Convict Music, so why why would I come work for you? How does that benefit me? You know, and he was like, well, you know, I want you to be, you know, you're the young generation, and I want you to be a part of my company. So I said, well, listen, the only way I will come to Def Jam is if I can be the vice president, is if I can have equity in the company. Other than that, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing on my own. And period. So, you know, he was like, well, whatever you want. And so I gave him some time to think about it, and he called me. He was like, yo. Welcome to Def Jam. You're going to be the youngest vice president ever in hip-hop music. So I was like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, lucky you. So um, what are personally your plans and goals for for, 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 um, for, 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 for this entertainment, bus entertainment business? Because it's, it's, it's wide open right now. We got a lot of people, a lot of new coming, you know. Um, a lot of people coming out of nowhere, try to be something they not, you know, I mean, try to uh, claiming that, you know, I mean, they can do this, they can do that. I bet they can, they don't do nothing, you know, just like in Senegal in here. When you talk about hip hop, we got about 5,000 rappers, but when you go to the market, like a full year, you're going to only see like three to four albums and only one or two are going to be at least listenable, you know what I'm saying? So are the young entrepreneurs in here, what are your plans and your goals? Like, well, why? what can we be ready for? Uh, my plan is really, man, is to, you know, I'm a young black African in the music industry, so my plan is to open doors for other Africans to come behind me, other black young men to come behind me, you know, so that's why I got to set a high goal. I got to kind of, you know, me taking a job is a risk because now I got to show and prove on the corporate side, you know, so, but I'm not, but, but, you know, I'm just trying to bring light to, to the young generation, you know what I'm saying, to the next, the next CEOs, the next executives, so, you know, and I'm trying to give back to the young guys that want to do this, and I really, really have a passion for what I do. So, you know, just trying to be good, trying to be the best at what I do, man, and 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 just trying to keep going and 
you know, keep God first, you know what I mean, and just breaking down doors because you got to understand, you know, for me to be a young African man and a white, you know, in, 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 a, in a predominantly black, black American business, you know, I had some obstacles that I had to hurdle. You know, it wasn't easy, you know, so, but that kind of gave me motivation to go even harder. So, you know, and, and, and without motivation, without without no kind of goal and no strategy, you're not going to be able to succeed. Because, you know, people, when, when, when people tell you that you can't do something, that's when you say, you know what, I'm going to show you I can do it. So, you know, who would ever think I would be the youngest vice president in the, in the hip-hop and music? Nobody. Who would ever think it would be African from Senegal? Nobody. It hasn't been heard of. You know what I mean? So me knowing that I could be the first of something is the reason why I wanted to be. That's why I went so hard at going at it. You know what I mean? So uh, do you listen to Senegalese hip-hop? Um, Not really. I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, I've heard a couple of things, but, you know, it's not really nothing that makes me excited. I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, it sounds cool, but I don't see it for it to, for it to go to the next level. You know, I think... It's gonna have to be a Senegalese that kind of speaks the language of English or French. Like, if you're gonna be, if if you're gonna be like, you know, I like I like the guy from France. What's what's homie name from France? Huh? Yeah, I like I like Reem. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's dope. You know, but it, but if you're gonna be a, a Senegalese rapper, you can't speak Wolof because it's only so far you're gonna go with that. So you're gonna have to be able to either speak French or speak English. To speak English, so in here we got um, um like I said, we got about five thousand rappers in here, and um none of them, like we can say like only two or three percent of them that um we got them speaking English and all that. But the thing is that accidentally, if you happen to have um um to meet a Senegalese rapper who's speaking good English and you know I mean, whose music is really influencing you, will you, will you be able to sign him on Convict or help him being on Def Jam or something like that? Absolutely. If I, if, you know, if I can look at him and I feel like he's a star and I feel like he really has good music, then I, I would definitely look into that, you know. I'm not going to just sign you because you're African, but I will sign you if you're talented, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, because it's a business, of, but, I, but I do want to help, you know, the next Akons. I want to help the next Boos, you know, so I'm definitely going to pay close attention to what's going on around me because I know, I, I'm sure that out there is another Akon out there. I'm sure it's another boo out there. I'm sure it's another rain out there. I'm sure it's another whoever. You know what I mean? So definitely, I'm gonna keep my ears to the streets always. So who is the hardest? Um, the, the hardest dude on on convict right now? When you say hardest, you mean like as far as who's the hottest? Yeah. I mean, you know, I gotta give it to Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. She's official in convict. Yeah, she's kind of live, so it's the same thing. Right there. So is there anything you want people to know about boo that they don't know about? Um. You know, not nothing specific. You know, just I just I just want them to know that, you know. Any you know, if you if you put God first and you have a dream, you know anybody can make it. You know what I mean? So, you know, just look at my situation. Just look at my brother's situation. You know, we all came from nothing, literally nothing, and we made and we and we and we and we got something of ourselves. So, you know, I just want the the youth of Africa to know that, you know, you don't have to be a singer. You can be a a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you know what I mean? You can be an executive, you know? Find your niche, and whatever your niche is, work hard every day to become whatever that is. You know what I mean? Period, point blank. Like, you know, everybody looks at the blings and the cars and the jewelry, but it took us 15 years to get to where we at. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's touch on that a little bit. Like, um, people see hip-hop today, like, it's, 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 it's cars, jewels, uh, women, and all that, you know, and how does that affect you personally as a young entrepreneur? I mean, you know, it's just, it comes with the territory. It comes with, it come with, you know, rap is a lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? So it comes with the territory, but you have to be able to differentiate the real from the fake. You have to understand is that that's not real. That ain't real life because nobody really lives like that but a certain percentage of people, you know what I mean? So you have to know that it look good on TV, but that's not how everybody live. The average rapper is going to rent the car for his video, he going to rent some jewelry for a video, and he going to go back home to his apartment. So you can't base your life off of what you see on TV because that's not real.
Because TV is fake. It's, it's like a movie. A movies ain't real. You know what I mean? So, it's, you know, so you have to live amongst your means. You know what I mean? And, you know, do what you got to do to make it. But don't don't get so, so deep into the game to where you start living a lifestyle because that lifestyle ain't real. Lifestyle ain't real. Just like, the, like as I was saying to, um, um, on the other day on my show, because people think that, you know, that's, that's, that, 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 that's hip hop today because they just claiming something they not in all that. They, it's just like, they, you're not living for yourself no more. You're living for what people think about you. You know what I'm saying? I, those people that's claiming gangster, gangster, and all that. You know what I mean? Those people don't want to do harm. You know? It doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, I always keep teaching people on my radio show, on my TV show, just to keep on listening to good hip-hop music. You know what I mean? Not some gangster stuff or, or you know what I mean, people claiming something they're not and all that, trying to promote something negative and all that. It's, that's not how it goes. That's not hip-hop. That's not. That's not. I mean, you know, so, like I said, Everybody gonna like what they like, and everybody gonna listen to what they listen to. You know, my job is not to tell you what to listen to. You know what I mean? Because you know, I listen to gangster music, and I listen to you know, Talib, Kweli, or Common Sense, or Nas. I listen to everything. But as far as you as a person, don't get caught up in somebody else's life because nine times out of ten, it's just a movie. You know, it's entertainment. All, everything that we do is entertainment. Pray point blank. At the end of the day, so y'all watching right now live on the Joint TV show with my man Boo right here. He comes, brother, co CEO of Convict Music, vice president of the Def Jam. It's official Convict for life, baby. What's your last word? So, one last question in one word. What is the most dangerous thing about this music industry? Money. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> it's, it's funny. I got, I got the same answer twice today. <laughs> I'm just from Kyle right now. He told me about money. You talking money. So we saw money then. Let's get that money then. It's all good. On the Joint TV show right now, the next video, you know what I'm saying? Acorn featuring Lil Wayne and Young Jeezy. What up?